what's up guys this video it will probably be more of an apology slash reflection because I wanted to do this video to kind of reflect back on the fact that you know five years ago I actually started doing the actual NorCal Corner when I actually fully declared NorCal Corner to be a show when in fact NorCal Corner went on for quite a while but um, essentially that's not what I'm talking about this year this month October 2016 marks five years since Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown from power in Libya and everything that happened since then has happened and the reason why I'm going back to this, reflecting on the past, was because I really want to apologize to a lot of people, especially the Marxist community and a lot of people in general, um, for the fact that I had actually initially, during that time, supported uh, Gaddafi's overthrow. Now keep in mind, this was also back in a time when I was still very bourgeois in my thinking. I was still very um, liberally minded. Um, this was actually before I even made my full leap to Marxism-Leninism. You know, I basically, basically my views were still very liberal. My, I, you know, I don't think I'd even read the Communist Manifesto yet. I don't even think I'd, you know, I don't even think I even cracked open much of Marx's work until you know, a few months later. The point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, all that aside, you know, I basically supported what was a, U, um, a U.S. imperialist intervention. I basically supported what was imperialism and basically the, essentially the Western influence coming into Libya. And I essentially supported you know, whatever aftermath came about it, which was also the problem. And a lot of the problems that would come down to bourgeois thinking in general is that they don't really think that far ahead. They don't think about the repercussions. And basically, ever since then, ever since Gaddafi's overthrow, and first of all, let me just state, was Gaddafi probably the best person to continue to be in Libya? Probably not. Just like Assad is probably not the best, you know, is not necessarily, you know, the greatest person in the world to have in power either. But he's the, you know, at the time, at the time, you know, it, these people are what's best for that country. Because they basically hold the demons at the door. And essentially, that's proven itself correct with the state of Libya. The National Transitional Council took over in October 2011. Since then, there's been sectarian violence. There's been ISIS even coming into the area. There's been various factions, even Gaddafi loyalists, that still exist in the country. And essentially while they currently have a House of Representatives or whatever the bullshit case is, Libya essentially is fractured and it has become a failed state. Essentially, Libya has become another Somalia. And I think a lot of this has directly been contributed to the fact that of the U.S.-led intervention that overthrew Gaddafi. Now, I think either way Gaddafi was going to be overthrown anyway, one, one way or the other, whether it took a few more years or whatever, eventually it would have happened. But at least, possibly without maybe the U.S. help, maybe the Libyans could have actually figured out what to do afterwards, done something a little bit better. Or maybe they could have been in the same situation they are now, who knows. It's kind of hard to really think of an alternative history to this. All I can say is that I can only apologize 
for my way of thinking back then. I hadn't fully converted to the idea of Marxism. I hadn't, you know, I was still very bourgeois-minded at the time. And looking back, would I have supported Gaddafi? Uh, would I have supported Gaddafi um, at that time if I had the way of thinking I did now? Yeah, I would. I would have supported Gaddafi, just as I support Assad in Syria. But unfortunately, I can't change the way that I was. I can't change the thinking that I had, the primitive thinking that I had back then. I can't change the past. And we can't change the past. It is what it is. Basically, it's been five years since Gaddafi was murdered. And, oh, you know, since Libya has basically become, you know, the bourgeois state that it is, but at the same time, Libya has become a very failed state. It has become a very, it, it, the country itself, it, it's not even a united Libya. It's not even Libya anymore. It's various factions from ISIS to, um, you know, to Gaddafi loyalists, to, you know, um, uh, what was it, there, there's the Tobruk government, there's the one in Tripoli, there's all kinds of base, governments, basically, that are going on right now, and there's really no one Libya right now. So, basically, Libya has become fractured and fed, and it's just what I would call a failed state. They're trying to rebuild. They're trying their best to unite the country, but I just see Libya basically as it is now and going into the future, I see Libya as another Somalia. They're going to have a long, treacherous, uh, arduous, is a better word, they're going to have a long, arduous, you know, time ahead of them. This is their long march. This is their arduous march, and forgive me for using comparisons of, you know, of revolutionary thinking for such a bourgeois state, but this is basically, for Libya, this is basically their arduous march. They are literally going to be suffering from inflation, from humanitarian crisis, they're going to be suffering from starvation. They're going to suffer from a lot of things. And they're going to suffer a lot of violence in the years to come because of what happened post Gaddafi. Because of people like me who supported the, um, the rebel regime because of U.S. imperialism. I, we've all made our bed. We have to sleep in it. We can't change the past. What I'm just trying to say is that Libya's future is not good. I really do see Libya becoming becoming another Somalia. In fact, I would I'll go so far to say as it already has. But what the Libyans do in the future, what they plan to do to resolve things in the future, is purely up to them and should only be up to them. And if that means that the nation has to split up into several different countries, maybe that's the best option. If not, then something's going to need to happen to unite the people. But what I really do think the people really need is another revolution. I think the people need an actual real revolution that brings them back to some form of socialism. Because I think only through socialism is that going to benefit everyone as a whole. But right now, that just seems their future just really looks bleak. I fear for Libya. 
I'm very, you know, I cry for Libya, figuratively. You know, I, I really feel sorry for this state that had so much potential and now is basically in anarchy, basically. But there's nothing really we can do. We can't change the past and it is what it is. I've made decisions and made and supported things that I'm no longer, that I, looking back, would no longer do. That made decisions, supported things that I really am not proud of anymore. You know, I was, fuck, 20 years old when this happened. Again, my line of thinking was still very bourgeois. You know, the last few years have been an interesting transition for me. Especially politically. And so much has come from my political transition. But basically, I can't say anything more other than the fact that I'm sorry. You know, had I known what I had known today... I would have never supported this. I would have supported Gaddafi from the get-go. So, to my Marxist community, to my fellow anti-imperialists, to my audience, who's come to expect honesty and humbleness from me. I'm sorry. I'm Norcal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been Norcal Corner.